In order to sell their products, various industries make many promises to entice their future customers and draw in more potential customers. Sometimes though, they promise a little too much, and when they fail to deliver, it leads to dissatisfaction and a breach of trust that is very difficult to come back from. The same is true for the video games industry as well. Over the years, Sony and Xbox have made several promises that they simply weren't able to keep at the very end. Today, we'll go through the 10 times that Sony and Xbox lied to us. Number 10, the Killzone 2 reveal. Probably one of the most infamous of lies in the gaming industry is the reveal of Killzone 2. It was revealed via a gameplay trailer at E3 2005 that left the audience in awe of the PS3's capabilities and the kind of games they would be getting on the PS3. Many wondered if what was shown was actually gameplay or a pre-rendered CG video. In an interview with Jeff Cayley, SCEA then Vice President Jack Tredden revealed that it was actually all real gameplay and not a pre-rendered CGI trailer, implying that it was the actual game being played. This was a complete lie, as was revealed and shown in actual gameplay at E3 2007, a far cry from what was shown two years before that. There were multiple other games that were presented this way as well by Sony during that time, but Killzone 2 remains a stark example of the many lies that video game companies are capable of. Although Killzone 2 was a great game, this was something that never should have happened. Number 9, PS3's 120 FPS support and backwards compatibility. Killzone 2 was not the only lie told during the PS3 era. In an interview, Sony Computer Entertainment President Ken Kutaragi claimed that the PS3 would run games at 120 frames per second, which seems very ludicrous in hindsight. During the PS3 reveal, Sony used these types of untestable claims to drum up excitement for the next generation of consoles, and to give gamers the general feeling that the PS3 was going to usher in a new era of technology. 120 FPS and backward compatibility are well-known examples of this. Even in the following console generation, 30 FPS was the industry standard, with some games going beyond that, but not anywhere near 120 frames. Even now, with the powerful capabilities of today's console generation, only a few games can actually reach up to 120 frames per second. Ken Kutaragi also announced that the PS3 would have backward compatibility and would run PS1 and PS2 games as it had a PS2 processor on the motherboard to run games perfectly. PS2 won many over with its ability to run PS1 games and many were excited for this feature to return to the PS3 which it did, but not for long. As a controversial cost-cutting measure, the PlayStation 3 that Sony launched in Europe only had software-based backwards compatibility, meaning that many games didn't work, and many more were broken and buggy. And by mid-2007, Sony had introduced this model in the US as well, discontinuing the truly backwards-compatible models and making them expensive collector's items today. Number 8. Project Natal, aka Kinect. Alongside Sony, Xbox 2 had plenty of lies to tell during the 7th generation of video game consoles. The Nintendo Wii made quite the waves with its motion controller, and Sony and Xbox decided they wanted in on the game as well. Sony went for a more copy-pasted approach with its PlayStation Move controllers, but Xbox pitched something very ambitious. Xbox amazed many with its Project Natal reveal and the Milo demo. Project Natal would later become the Xbox Kinect. Although the Kinect did make it out, it was nowhere near as ambitious or interesting as the reveal had touted it as. The Milo demo in particular has become known as a big lie as it showed something too ambitious for even today. It showed a woman interacting completely naturally with a virtual boy named Milo who would not only recognize Kate's questions and inquiries, but also respond with the appropriate responses as a real boy would. Although this was probably a proof of concept thing, we never saw something that would implement it anywhere near it. Number 7, Cloud-Based Gaming on Xbox One. A fair share of lies were told during the succeeding 8th generation of consoles as well. One of the key features and goals of the Xbox One was told by Xbox to be its focus on an always-on concept, an environment during its development and for future prospects of the console. Xbox said this would utilize the cloud. 
Most of us now use the cloud to store our data, such as videos, documents, images, and much more, but its applications in gaming can be quite impressive. This has resulted in the birth of cloud gaming, and Xbox had similar plans for the Xbox One. Xbox's plan wasn't just for saved games either. There were plans to house game environments with the cloud so they could be destructible, living worlds which would then be shared across multiple users. This was demonstrated with Crackdown 3. Since the constant online functionality was abandoned almost immediately, this feature never saw the light of day, and the mediocre reception of Crackdown 3 did not help their case either. Number 6. PlayStation's Focus on Next Gen like Xbox, Sony had its own ambitious plans as well. In an interview, Jim Ryan told GamesIndustry.biz about PlayStation's strong belief in generations. Ryan emphasized on developing features and benefits for next-gen that were not available or even possible on the previous generation. He stated that since they are going through the trouble of developing next-gen, they should make it worth everyone's while. Microsoft had been lambasted for its belief in developing games across generations. This was because many were of the view that developing for the next generation and previous generation at the same time essentially holds back the next generation. A justification used for this belief was that developers try to maintain a balance between both and don't properly utilize the next generation's capabilities. With all the talk about PlayStation's belief in generations, it was expected that the PS5's next-gen exclusives would be exactly that, exclusives. However, PlayStation announced its next-gen games such as Horizon Forbidden West and Spider-Man Miles Morales would both be releasing on PS4 as well as PS5, to the dismay of many who wanted to enjoy next-gen to its full ability. Fans now feared these next-gen releases would possibly be hampered by cross-gen releases. Number 5. AAA Exclusives for Xbox as is the norm for console makers, both Xbox and PlayStation promised to deliver top-quality AAA exclusives for their respective consoles. While Xbox did deliver on their promise with some compelling titles such as Sunset Overdrive, Gears 5, and others, there was much room for improvement. Even more so when compared to PlayStation, which produced some of the best games in not only PlayStation history, but gaming history in general, with games spread across various genres. Although, things seem to be improving for Xbox as of late, following high-profile studio acquisitions in recent years, the biggest of which was the Activision Blizzard acquisition, which is still under process. Xbox has also promised to deliver us with compelling AAA exclusives through said acquired studios in the following years, with several titles already being in development. Number 4. Scalebound and Phantom Dust Cancellations Xbox did have some planned exclusives that could have solved its lack of games. One of the planned exclusives was Scalebound by famed action games developer Platinum Games, which was revealed at E3 2014. Many were excited by the reveal and were looking forward to the action game that featured dragons and would also supposedly have co-op. The fact that it was being directed by Hideki Kamiya of Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, and Bayonetta excited fans even more so. The game was sadly cancelled by Microsoft, much to the dismay of many. But recently, Kamiya has expressed interest in reviving Scalebound, so maybe there is still some hope. Another game announcement at E3 2014 that was ultimately cancelled was the Phantom Dust remake. The Phantom Dust remake cancellation was something that saddened fans greatly, as that was one of the more anticipated titles. The original Phantom Dust was not a great financial success, but it had become a cult classic, with many people within Xbox, including Phil Spencer, being its strong advocates, stating that the original game was released way ahead of its time. Although, fans did get a remaster of the original game on Xbox One and Windows in 2017. Number 3. PS5 Pre-Order Debacle one of the missteps in PS5's release was the fiasco that happened following the opening of PS5 pre-orders at retailers. In a video interview, PlayStation Worldwide marketing head Eric Lempel said, So I think it's safe to say, we'll let you know when pre-orders will happen, it's not going to happen with a minute's notice, we're going to at some point let you know when you can pre-order a PlayStation 5, so please don't feel like you have to go run and line up anywhere until you receive official notice on how that will work. However, PlayStation did announce it with a minute's notice. Pre-orders for the PlayStation 5 opened shortly, and pricing was revealed in the company's showcase and it was a disaster. 
Pre-orders opened up at select retailers, and fans scrambled to pull out their wallets and put their money down. Pre-orders literally went live before Sony made an official announcement that they were going live, as retailers went rogue and opened up pre-orders a day early. And it turned chaotic quickly, as sites crashed and people panicked whether they would even get their PS5 or not. Later, PlayStation 5 offered an apology on Twitter by admitting that PS5 pre-orders could have been handled way better. They tried to make it up by announcing that over the next few days, that more consoles would be released for pre-order and more PS5s would be made available through the end of the year. Number 2, PS4's Crossplay While all those broken promises by Sony resulted in disappointment, in this case, it led to something good. Crossplay is the capability to play an online game with others who are playing the same game but on different hardware, such as two players playing a game together from different consoles. This has become an important part of the gaming sphere and enhanced the communities of online games in various ways. As Microsoft and Nintendo allowed crossplay on their platforms, PlayStation remained adamant that they would not yield for the longest time and did not allow it. However, with mounting pressure from developers and fans alike, PlayStation finally started to support it. It started with a few games on the PS4, and the amount of supported games has increased ever since, especially since the release of the PS5. Number 1, Xbox One's Used Games Another case of a broken promise leading to something good was shown by Xbox. It is pretty evident that Xbox made several missteps with the launch of Xbox One, many of which were caused by Xbox's focus, or attempt at least, on its always online plan. This had several implications, such as a 24-hour online check to run even offline games, and limitations on used games and game sharing. Following extensive complaints and a negative reaction from fans and the larger gaming industry in general, the decision was reversed as Xbox updated its blog to reflect the fact that this was no longer going to be the case. I'm sure you guys weren't expecting good lies in the video, but you know, we gotta keep things positive sometimes. Speaking of positives, actually, uh, we'd really like to keep our monthly subscriber rate positive as well. So maybe go ahead and click that big red button. Thank you.